Hello my friends and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Master Detective Archives Rain Code for the Nintendo Switch. My name is Flatless Bird, this is your story based game channel today. We're going to continue to expose the truth in the Mystery Labyrinth. And a lot of what I thought was true, which the game told me wasn't true, could now be true. And that may seem confusing, but... If you think about it, a lot of things that said, when I said, hey, this is how X happened, and the game said, no, this is not how it happened, uh, the game, through Yuma's eyes, was looking at it from, okay, well, only one person could have done it. So if only one person could have done it, then this person couldn't have done X, Y, or Z. Or I should say X, Y, and Z, right? But the thing is, now that Yuma knows maybe the there's multiple accomplices now it's going to make a little bit more sense of what I originally thought so I was maybe a step ahead of where I should have been but hey you know that doesn't happen very often so I'm happy about that although although there is a question of if they all were working together when we were talking to them individually they seem very uh, very, um, angry at each other. I mean, if they were all working together, why would they feel that way, right? So, I guess that's a question we'll still have to answer. Hope we all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. By separating the house, the three of them divide up the tasks that need to be done to pull off the murder. Don't you think so, Yuma? Yeah, I think it's the only way. Huh? <laughs> oh, you sure sound confident. Does it mean the scream on that last one seem a lot more violent than it normally does? How did the three work together to pull off an impossible and now, crime? There's a new problem to solve. We have to expose the secret behind their complicity. How exactly they cooperated together and the timeline of the crime. G got it. So I assume we gotta go back to each door. Then the first thing to discuss is. Well, the first thing to discuss should be either the middle or the right one. Probably the middle one. How was the poison brought to the theater hall? You sure about that? I'm pretty sure there's no set order you gotta go. So I'm just going... Let's start with the poison being brought to the theater hall. I'll just go with this one first. Their conspiring began with how was the poison brought to the theater hall. It's a route we already explored to the very end. So let's blast through it! Hey, wait! <laughs> Speed running mode activated. <laughs> Look at Desi Hiko hang on. The poison to the theater hall was Yoshko, right? Yes. Yeah, the poison neutralizes after 30 minutes, so it had to be brought into the theater during the show. As the production assistant, only Yoshko could have done it. Looking back, the reason they chose poison as the murder weapon was to establish an alibi. The poison was only active for 30 minutes, which gave the other girls an alibi. Yoshiko went to the lab for the poison as soon as the performance began. She had the extra glass hidden in her bag, and after she brushed poison onto it, she put it back in her bag and returned to her seat in the front row as if nothing happened. The problem is, what happened next? <laughs> Yeah. Why do you, what did Yoshika do with the poison glass after bringing it? Uh, she... What did Yoshika do with the poison glass after bringing it? Uh, she would have handed it to Warina. Because Conan was the one who got killed, that doesn't make any sense. Kurane's up on the lights. It, 
Isn't this the how was the poison mixed into the glass root? Wow. It really connected. Yeah, it's all, all one right. big Let's keep going and reach the truth. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you said Yoshiko handed the poison glass over to Waruna, but Waruna was performing on stage, right? How could she receive the glass while on stage? The blackout. The only time I can think of is when they turned off the lights. Correct. Yoshiko sat on the right edge of the front row close to the wings, where the actors enter and exit from scenes. She probably stood up when the lights went out and left the poisoned glass near the right wing. Even if she couldn't get on stage, she could at least do that within five seconds. Then, Warna picked up the glass and hid it under her costume. The costume check happened before the performance, so she got around that by receiving the cup during the performance. I see. So they passed the baton during the five seconds the lights were out. The two of them must have rehearsed it as much as the rest of the play. But what happened after that? Suppose Waruna did get the poison glass. How did she swap it with the real glass while the play was still ongoing? A few moments after when her back was turned, there's a scene where Waruna approaches the shelf. It only lasts two or three seconds, but Waruna's hands in the shelf are completely hidden from the audience. Right, slide of hand. At that moment, Waruna could have switched out the original glass with the poisoned one. So they used the play itself for their seemingly impossible crime. <laughs> Talk about guts. This is something only thespians could pull off. <laughs> you got me. Isn't there a safer way down? That's why that always confuses me. Thespian. A thespian is relating to drama in the theater, an actor or actress. Master, hurry up and break this one down too! Right. How was the poison glass chosen? Chosen. Chosen. Uh, Kerne guided to it. Yeah, Kerne guided to it. Exactly. That's how they all link together. Put the uh, spotlight. All right, we got this one too. Help me a bit more. Let's keep going. Wait, can we take a break? This is the final one. It's the how was the poison glass chosen? From here, it's exactly as we solved it before. Kurune told Karin beforehand to take the glass the spotlight hits first. Right. And then, after confirming the poisoned glass from the catwalk above, the spotlight was pointed directly at it. And that's the method behind the murder weapon. Method? Sounds more like madness if you ask me. <laughs> that solves this mystery. We've almost reached the truth. Seriously? That's terrible. Huh? Why? Because I haven't gotten Shinigami to fall for me yet. Oh, come on. That's not gonna happen. Even if you stay here for a hundred years. In fact, I basically hate your guts. Okay, good. You know, beyond the hate, there could be love. No, just, just, just hate. It's kind of like traveling the globe. You and I can go in opposite directions, but eventually we'll meet. And then she kicks you so hard you fly into this into space, and you just float out in space in an in infinite direction opposite to her. That's a stretch. <laughs> I never get tired of seeing that. This is the last wall. Who murdered Karen? Right. Yoshiko, Waruna, and Karane. Can't believe I actually got a case yes, right. That is so that weird. Door is the who room. We finally made it. Such a good feeling to know for once. 
Because I didn't get any of the other cases so far. I mean, I was suspicious of the priest. I never realized it could have been a uh, copycat, though. You know, until we were doing it. It looks like all the culprits are here. But... there. Why do they look so sad? How boring! You call yourselves the final bosses of the Mystery Labyrinth? Then start acting like it! Might as well guard the truth till the end at this point! It, they're, they're sad because they did it to avenge... Aiko. Because Cotton killed Aiko. <laughs> There. <sighs> it's a really sucky situation if you think about it. I mean, they committed murder, but they committed murder trying to... I mean, for all they know, you know, Cardin could have been gunning for any of them next. So maybe they did it out of love for Aiko and also for self-defense. God, Shinigami. Let's do this, Master. I always forget which buttons do which. Kick, tackle, jump. Tackle, there we go. Like I said, I always get the controls mixed up. Show the wall the solution key. Um, duh, duh, duh. If this was a whole picture. Even if it wasn't a whole picture, it still was gonna. Yeah. Let's do it, Master. Okay, I got the controls now, I think. Shut up. Don't come any closer. I I did it all alone. It's the first one that throws me off, because There's nothing connecting us. Uh, the photo with water now. You're wrong. Huh? Come on. You did it. Great job. That's right. Okay, okay. Good so far. I made one mistake because I fumbled over the controls. But everything else has been good. Hers is gonna probably be the same, right? You're wrong. I didn't have to take time to read that. I was just like, I know this is gonna be the same. What's going on here? I thought they hated each other. Yeah, that's the one thing that's interesting. No, that probably isn't true. That might have been an act. Uh huh. Oh, what do you mean by that? If you put together the three photos they each have. What? So they're all in the same picture? That's the truth. New key, a group photo of Aiko, Yoshiko, Warena, and Karane. No need for mercy. Let's do this, 
This sucks. Stop it! Get away from me! Because this isn't like the previous cases. Because now all three of them are going to die. And they did it to avenge a friend. Yes, the murderers. I understand that. But this isn't like... There wasn't a... um. There wasn't this sense of like evil here. Like, the nail man's a religious fanatic who is out of his gourd. And then, of course, we had the assassin who purposely tried to kill everyone. Who was never our friend. And this now... This is just a guess. But you three weren't actually on bad terms with each other, were you? In fact, it was all an act to get revenge for Aiko. You all cherished the same picture with her. It was originally a single photo of you all together, with Aiko in the middle. You were all close friends. And when you connect the pictures together... Oh, that was cool how they did that. Everyone is there, smiling. So happy. So... why? Come on, we've got work to do before you get all sappy. Let's go. One more push and we'll be done with this labyrinth. <sighs> what would a hero do? A real defender of justice would defeat evil here now and be done with it. But I'm no hero. All I want is the truth. And the truth is right here. So why go any further? Will solving this mystery... Really make anyone happy? Master, do you sympathize with them? He's got a point. I mean, solving this mystery is not going to do anything. That's not something a detective should do. Your job is to solve mysteries, isn't it? If so, you have to expose the truth. But at what you cost? You have to prove it in a way anyone can understand and anyone can see. Detectives aren't defenders of justice. They're defenders of truth. Defenders of truth. A detective must never overlook a mystery. Any and all truths must be exposed. A detective must always prioritize solving a case. Emotions must be discarded to reach a perfect solution through a perfect deduction. It's easier said than done. Yuma, if you can't do it, I can take your place. No. I'll do it. Or the one who has to. I'll take responsibility. I'll see this through. Despite the cost. Despite the horrible cost. Dinamon time? Yep. Deduction Dynama. Okay. Karen and Aiko argue. Karen shows Aiko. That's when Aiko steps into the flower bed. Mostly beats her to death. 
Well, why would I carry you? Just carry you as the brick. Karen sees up behind Ico, brick in hand, and beats her to death. Replaces the brick, begins facing Ico's death. Faking Ico's death. Runs off with her shoes. The corpse is located from the rooftop. Karen looks down from the rooftop. Iko's cause of death disguised as suicide. Which I don't have unlocked yet. Theater before the performance began. Yarina, uh, Yoshiko, Wadena, and Karane get into position. A greeting by Karin. Yoshiko leaves during the performance. Yoshiko travels through the hallway. Yoshiko is headed to the chemistry lab. Which we don't have yet. Uh, apply the glass, the poison, which we don't have yet. Yoshiko applies the poison in the glass. Probably to complete, returns to the theater. Yoshiko watches the performance. The stage goes dark. Yoshiko places the poison glass on stage. Wai now retrieves the poison glass. Wai now hides the poison glass in her costume. Wai now goes to the couple admitted cut performance. What did Wai now do? She switched the glasses. Okay, that just unlocked a ton. Suicide by jumping. Uh, headed to the chemistry lab. Grab the poison. Warner swaps the glasses. Corinne watches Warner actions from above. Corinne brings the bottle and glasses. Warner is poured into the glasses. Wana shuffles. Karane shuffles the glasses. Karane watches from the catwalk. Karane keeps track of the poison glass. What did Karane use? She used the spotlight. Karane guides, points the spotlight at the glasses. First glass slip by the spotlight is poisoned. Karin takes the poison glass. The two drink at the same time. Karin begins writhing in pain. Why did Karin take the poison glass? Because it was in the script. And then Karin vomits blood and dies. Wana is pictured, Yoshiko is pictured, Rane is pictured. For whom did the trio commit the crime? Aiko. Mystery unraveled. That all makes very much sense too. Like all of that just comes together very well. with Aiko's death six months ago. I'm gonna go ahead in auto so we can just watch this and then we'll talk. Aiko was thought to have committed suicide by jumping off the roof. But in truth, Cotton murdered her. The shoes left on the roof had dirt on them from the flower bed at the crime scene. The blood stains on the bricks were also unnatural. And it was obvious that an amateur had faked it. If it wasn't a suicide, it would contradict Cotton's testimony. However, she didn't originally intend to kill Aiko. It was a crime of passion. So they got into an argument, Cotton saw red, then boom? Women are so scary. 
Yoshiko, Warona, and Kurane probably realized the truth behind what happened. The three teamed up to avenge Aiko. They used the dress rehearsal to commit this crime. Regardless of the reason, getting together to plan a murder is pretty crazy. Yoshiko in the audience was to bring the poisoned glass into the theater hall. Once unsealed, the poison is harmless after 30 minutes. So she went to the lab 15 minutes after the play began. The poison container is too big to transport unnoticed. So she applied it to the glass in her bag with a paintbrush. Thus, the poison glass was created. She brought it back to the theater hall, then went on standby at the right end of the front row. Warna, who was acting on stage, was to switch out the poisoned glass. During the five-second blackout 30 minutes into the play, Yoshiko placed the poisoned glass in the wings. Warana, on stage, retrieved it and hid it under her costume. Then, in the scene where she approaches the shelf, she exchanged the glass there with the poisoned one. Switching in the murder weapon on stage while everyone is watching? What a pervy exhibitionist! What's perverted about that? And Kurene, on the lights, would guide Cotton to take the poisoned glass. Then came the duel of poison cups! The two glasses on the shelf had juice poured into them. Cotton and Warana shuffled them in a way the audience couldn't see. But Kurene, who was on the catwalk directly above the stage, saw exactly which glass held the poison. She confirmed the location of the poisoned glass and shone the spotlight on it first. Cotton drank from that glass 45 minutes after the start of the play. Winner, winner! Poisoning complete! That was so long! Good job! Kurene told Cotton of a change in stage direction, but the victim was to take the glass the spotlight hits first. Cotton followed this instruction to take the poisoned one. The whole sequence of events for this crime would have been impossible for a single person. Their cooperation was also a means to conceal their involvement. But I can't shake the feeling that there was some other reason behind it. The ruthless, disgusting criminals who conducted this murder are... Yoshiko! Warana! Kurane! You are the killers! Wait, what? They may have pretended to always be at odds with one another. But deep down, they were bonded through their shared admiration for Aiko. But now the curtain sets. And the hard part must be done. Oh, this... this is my answer. Oh, this sucks. I don't want them to die. I know that what they did is. Not something I can ever condone. Really, no other way. But at the same time, oh, was there no way to prove Cotton did this without killing her? That's not possible. Not in Kanai Ward. Yeah, that's also what I'm thinking. They're in a corrupt city where people just overlook the truth, and they knew the truth, and. They, they they took justice in their own hands, but murder is still wrong. But do they deserve to die? The peacekeepers bend the truth whichever way they want to. 
The three girls couldn't get justice from them, which led to this crime. But that... it doesn't make it right! How long did you put on an act for this? Aiko... was our sunlight. Wherever she went, we were meant to be there with her. She was... everything to us. We were together... ever since we were young. Her dream... was our dream. We were nothing special. But she called us her rivals. Those words... encouraged us to carry on. But... now she's gone. Everything's hopeless now. The three of us investigated Aiko's death. I used my parents' connections to view top secret case files. But no matter what we did, the peacekeepers refused to reopen the case. Because Karen's father is a big shot at Amaterasu Corporation. That's why we had to do it ourselves. We wanted revenge. Revenge became everything for us. And to get it, we pretended to fight amongst ourselves. We are actors, after all. But we don't have to anymore, right? We don't have to keep this up. We, we put, put on quite a show, show. didn't we, Aiko? This leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. Then again, most cases do. But that's the end. We can finally return to the real world. Yeah, but you don't know what's about to happen. I hope the girls open up like that in the real world, too. No, I don't think they can. Huh? Well, why is that? Oh, also, <laughs> where's Shinigami? I'm right here. Well, what do you think? Did you fall in love with me? I know you did. You must have, yeah? I already told you. I will never fall for you. You were seriously getting on my nerves. You're annoying and exhausting. Uh, Desuhiko? <laughs> did you think I was serious? I was just testing the bond between you two. <laughs> a bond? It's more like a curse, at least to me. Uh, right. I was just testing. I, I wasn't serious at all. I didn't get rejected, okay? I didn't. Oh, shush. We got more important things to worry about right now. Right. Just calm down. Anyway, let's do it. Time to exterminate the souls of the true culprits and destroy the mystery labyrinth. No! Wait, Shinigami, do we really have to do this? I mean, they... They're murderers. The reason why doesn't matter. I make my living reaping the souls of criminals. Because I'm Shinigami. No! Surging bloodlust, overflowing despair, the brilliant soul of Shinigami shall expunge this cursed case.
That sucks. Really, really sucks. So how are we going to get out of this with the gunpoint ahead? Probably because three girls are just going to suddenly drop dead around us. When did you... Boy, moved. Huh? What the... Wait, what just happened? Oh, hold on, let's all calm down. God! What? What's going on? I knew it. <laughs> the evil murderers have been expunged once again. Oh, right. I got one more job to do. Excuse me, everyone. The culprits behind this incident were Waruna, Karne, and myself. All three of us conspired to poison Karin. Uh, the way we got her to ingest the poison was... What you people have done, but next time it won't go your way. Remember that. Did you see that? <laughs> she was staring at me the whole time. She's got to be in love with me. Oh, fine. I guess she can keep the piece of my love as well. <sighs> What's got you so down? All three of them just died out of nowhere. Nobody's to blame for that. Oh, he doesn't remember anything. There's no reason for either of us to feel guilty. Speak for yourself. <sighs> Seems like all the memories from the mystery labyrinth are completely gone. Master, we're in the clear. All three of their deaths won't be your fault now. That's not what I'm worried about. Yuma! Kurumi? Thank you for saving me. I knew you'd come to the rescue. <sighs> anyway, are you alright? The peacekeepers didn't harm you, did they? No, I'm fine. Hey, Yuma? I don't want to get in the way of this tearful reunion. <laughs> but maybe we should get out of here. It'll be trouble if the peacekeepers come back. Yeah, that's probably true. Oh, right. Let's leave then. Oh, this, this case is just... This is a gut punch. Man, really, like... It just feels like... Like, I don't want those girls to die. I'll go on ahead to the agency and put in a good word for you. I don't really get how it all ended, but I have a hunch. Yuma, you did all the work, right? <laughs> Huh? Huh, guess he's got that intuition. <laughs> Looks like I won't be calling you rookie from here on out. Let's keep working together, my man. Mind your manners as you walk your girl home. Huh? <sighs> <sighs> 
Um, Yuma? Huh? What is it? This tension. Don't tell me. Is Don't ruin the moment. Oh my god. Did something happen? You seem down. Oh, well. Although the case was solved, three lives were lost. Right. I didn't expect Yoshiko and the others to. Mm hmm. <sighs> um, could it be that their deaths are related to your forte? What? A in a way. Wow, we've got another sharp one. Master, I hope you know this, but if you say anything about our contract... Yes, yes, shush. Sorry for saying something so strange. I know I'm off, right? Even if that were the case, you'd never tell me. <sighs> hey, Kurumi, there's somewhere I want to go. Will you come with me? Uh-huh. Sure. I guess. Detect a deed. An organization card. Those are granted by the WO. Treatment of criminals. Criminals captured by the accused keepers are sent to detention facilities where they are interrogated until they admit guilt. That is, if they're not disposed of on the spot. Wow, that's just messed up, game. Um, yeah, it shows how... These guys are like secret police from communistic dictatorship. <laughs> what a nice view! You know, uh, regions. Uh, you, you basically admit that you did something wrong, or we torture you until you met something wrong. Uh, very Spanish Inquisition like. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. It's like a secret hideout. I didn't know that Kamasaki had a place like this. Please. Help me save this city. Save this city, huh? I managed to save Kurumi by solving the case. But I killed those three girls. I'm responsible for their demise. If I had let the peacekeepers deal with it, at least their deaths could have been prevented. What exactly did I even solve? It's not a true solution if we can't save everyone. What I gained in exchange for my memories isn't some convenient mystery solving tool. It's literally the power of a death god. What are you musing about? You can't reclaim the past and you're not going to get your memories back either. In the end, you just have to accept it. Accept it? Instead of believing in some vague thing like justice, just believe in the truth. They say there's only one truth, and there's only one type of person who can find their way to that truth. Detectives. Even if I have to sacrifice others to find it, I should let so many people die for the truth? Master, you keep going to extremes. It's part of why you're a greenhorn. Uh, seems like you still have much to learn under my guidance. What is the truth? Why did I become a detective to seek it? You? Huh? Oh, yes? I know I already said this, but thank you so much. You are exactly the kind of person I thought you were. What do you mean by that? You're my hero. I'm no hero. I was just trying to expose the truth. But thanks to you, I was saved. If you weren't around, I wouldn't be here today. That's why a detective who exposes the truth is a hero in my book. It's what we do. If there were more detectives like you in this city, maybe Aiko's death would have been solved earlier. I mean, she's got a really good point there. I'm sure things would have been different. <sighs> Kanai Ward hasn't seen a hero like you in forever. That's why it's always been so dark here. So please, please continue to be our hero. A hero? Maybe before I lost my memories, I was trying to become someone's hero. This time, 
There was a steep price to be paid for exposing the truth. But even so, the truth must always be revealed. You know, I've always said that. I'd rather someone be honest to me than lie. Even if it's a nice lie, I'd rather be- I'd rather have honesty. So, I- I- I know we have to continue doing this. But unfortunately, there's just gonna be times when it doesn't feel good. But if everyone had done this, then this horrible thing may not have ever happened. So, man. I want to believe I can save someone. I want to continue being the hero she says I am. Still, I don't want to use Shinigami's powers again. <laughs> don't act like you don't like it, Master. I don't like seeing people die. Well, I'm just glad you seem more motivated now. Oh, yeah. We made a promise, didn't we? I we said did? I'd tell you about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret after the case was solved. Now, are you actually going to tell me anything that's really useful? I, I'm, I'm interested. Huh? Uh, oh, right. Hey, you seem like you weren't expecting much. Honestly, I just thought you said that just to get us to investigate the case and you really don't know anything. I'm, I'm not calling you a liar. I'm just saying my expectations weren't very high. But that's where you're wrong. Just between you and me, I am Kanai Ward's only informant. Informant? Yeah, what do you mean by that? Are you serious? A high school girl informant? I'm still a beginner, though. I started three years ago after taking over from my grandfather. And now that the peacekeepers control the city, there isn't much of a demand for information anymore. No wonder you know so much about rumors. Besides... I haven't felt this nervous since I was chased by those peacekeepers. That also explains why the peacekeepers were after you. <laughs> if Kurumi is an informant, maybe she does have some crucial information about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. I hope so. <sighs> Kanai Ward, I'm a Tatsu Corporation peacekeepers. I have no idea what's in store for me. No, but what about the future? It is what it is. You don't have a way in the world, do you, Shinigami? So, Kurumi, what do you know about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? Well, it's likely connected to the top secret research that Amaterasu Corporation is conducting. I think it has something to do with why the unified government approved of Kanai Ward's isolation. Top secret research? Approved? For the isolation Kanai has always been a city centered around Amaterasu. But there was a lot more freedom in the past. People were allowed to come and go as they pleased. It became an autonomous zone, free from the Yuji's influence only a few years ago. The reason behind it has to do with the top secret research that Amaterasu is conducting. But what is the research? I don't know all the details, but it's supposed to be able to change the entire structure of the world. All nations and enterprises worldwide want it. This research is what turned Amaterasu into a major global corporation. And that research is being done in Kanai Ward? I think so. It would explain why Kanai Ward's been isolated. It's so their research doesn't leak out. Research that can change the world? If that's true, it's some serious stuff. No wonder number one of the WDO would risk his neck here. Do you know any more details about that research? I do know a little bit. Grandpa risked his life to obtain one piece of confidential information about Amaterasu Corp. Okay. And I believe that somehow, it has to be related. What do you mean? Research to create a homunculus, an immortal monster. Is this Valkyrie profile all of a sudden? Homunculus? Immortal monster? Now, wait just a minute. Are you serious? I don't have any proof. But it's a fact that Amaterasu Corporation has previously researched homunculi. Homunculi? Being researched in this city. Hmm. 
Is that Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? Immortal monsters? Monkey It's turned into a fantasy story out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure not one to talk. <laughs> well, that's a good point. That's always been like that. That's all I know. Well, is my information useful to you? Although, most of it was left behind by my grandpa. Left behind? One day, my grandpa just vanished. He's been missing ever since. That's why I decided to take over where Grandpa left off as an informant. So, do you think what I've shared might help? Yeah. This is huge, considering... Really? That's great! Considering I had nothing till now. actually useful to a master detective! Oh, about that master detective thing. Look! That's where my Grandpa used to live! Takes me back. I wish I could see him again. <sighs> oh well. <laughs> and that's how you'll keep taking advantage of a high school girl, huh? Oh shush. By the way, Kurumi, why do you think your grandfather disappeared? Could it be the peacekeepers? No, I don't think the peacekeepers have anything to do with it. Grandpa vanished before Kanai Ward became isolated. He vanished? He was just suddenly gone. But I do believe I'll see him again someday. Master, forget about some geezer you don't even know. What about this homunculus stuff? The homunculus research. So I thought the uh, I thought that uh, he was killed by the peacekeepers too, but I guess not. If Amaterasu Corporation is still researching some immortal monster in Kanai Ward, it makes sense why there'd be such tight security. They fear the secret leaking to the outside world. Maybe it even has something to do with the great global mystery that Number One mentioned. Speaking of which, what could the great global mystery be anyway? There's too much stuff we don't know, but you're one step ahead of the other detectives now, yeah? Guess that flat-chested uggo is kinda useful. Maybe I should stop calling her uggo now. I'll just call her flat. Can you just stop calling her names? Be nice to people? Still gonna hold on to that, huh? I guess this is technically an improvement. You're gonna keep this info to yourself, right? It'll help you get ahead of the other master detectives. It's best that we share information now. No, I'll report this to everyone. Yeah. This isn't something I can deal with alone. I'm with you on that. Ugh, how lame. Couldn't you strike a pose and shout something like, I'm coming for you, Amaterasu? <laughs> can we do that? That'd be cool. That's not my role. All I can do is investigate Kanai Ward's ultimate secret just a little bit further. The rest should be left to the real master detectives to handle. <laughs> this is my fault as your mentor for babying you so much. You've become the kind of detective who only relies on others without trying to solve problems yourself. R what's wrong with relying on others? It's good to have a lie on other people. And uh, Krumi came through with some potentially very important information. Thank you so much for today. The pleasure is all mine. <sighs> I'm kind of hungry. Maybe I should... You like those meat buns too, huh? Go buy a meal, sorry. I didn't mean to cut her off. Yes, I love them. I eat at least one every two days. Oh, well, let's go get some food. They're kind of the comfort food of Kanai Ward. It's like I'm instinctively drawn to them. Would you like to join me? Yuma? Heck yeah. No thanks. Oh, I'll come pass. on. I see. Come on, Yoma. Yoma. Um, Yomi. Will we meet again? Like, uh, Yoma, come on. Huh? Yeah, of course. I'm like stumbling over his name because I'm just as shocked that I can't go out with her. Ever need any information? You can count on me. See you later. Uh, 
I hope she's okay on her own. I couldn't bring myself to say I'll walk you home. Come on, dude. Just say it. What are you, 12? Are you sure you don't want to go back to the agency? Weren't you running an errand a while ago? Oh, you're right. Oh, no. I better hurry back. Ah, I'm disappointed. Come on. Hopefully we'll see her again. I like her a lot. She's a cool character. What a weird load screen. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I like the weird sound effects going on. research. I still can't believe it's true. Does it ring a bell, Chief? Unfortunately, I've never even heard of it. You sure it's not just some rumor? The way Kurumi explained it leads me to think it's true. Regardless, there's too little information. We lack anything definite at the moment. Still, it's better than having nothing at all. Well done, Yuma. Thank you! Thank you. You're like a dog wagging its tail whenever you get complimented. Oh, come on. It's good to get complimented. You were late getting back, but I never imagined you'd get yourself into another mess. Ugh, what the hell is going on? <laughs> uh, I'm so angry. I'm talking with the lad. <laughs> what? I'm really sorry. And your tail gets tucked between your legs whenever you get yelled at. Well, no one likes to get yelled at either. Setting aside how I nearly died of hunger and that Yuma needs to be put on a leash, you picked another fight with the peacekeepers. Technically, That's I'm already the on a biggest problem here. I I'm already kind of on a leash. We weren't picking a fight. Besides, we got to expose the truth in the end. That look on Martina's face was awesome, right, Yuma? Yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> How can you be so relaxed? There, there, Lisp Man. Please remain calm. So, is it true the culprits in that case suddenly died? She's and gonna that start. Makes it similar to what happened in the mailman case. Yeah, she's gonna start connecting dots. Moreover, it is also similar in that those involved in each case, like Desuhiko and myself, had their memories wiped. Hmm, we're not gonna put anything past, uh, uh, d world famous detectives. There are too many common traits to call it a coincidence. Uh, um, <sighs> the memories related to the case disappear. <laughs> Perhaps it is due to someone's forte. Uh, No way. What kind of useless forte would that be? Besides, no one here has an ability like that. Yeah, exactly. Could another master detective have found their way here? It'd be one thing if we were anywhere else in the world, but we're in Kanai Ward. This isn't the kind of place some ambitious master detective could barge into by himself. If someone got officially dispatched here, I would know. Anyway... Why are you all looking so glum? Oh, he said officially dispatched. The case is closed and we got new information. It's a fantastic step forward. I actually agree with you on this one. It's springtime and all is right in the world. Spring? It rains all year long here. And we've had nothing but trouble. Ugh, just what the hell is going on here? It's like the hand of death itself. Oh, hi, Vivia. <gasps> What's wrong, Vivia? You know what they say. The greater the detective, the more often they encounter death. Isn't that right, Yuma? Uh, yeah? That's kind of creepy. I wonder if he has a death card on his shoulder. Based on the way you just talked there, it's, it's almost as if he knows what we have. 
That does kind of apply to you, Yuma. In a way, you're like a death detective. Uh, don't take it the wrong way. I mean that as a compliment. Mm -hmm. But even if it offends you, I refuse to apologize. Apologizing is too much of a hassle. <laughs> the death detective. You have a cool nickname, Yuma. I know that's a cool nickname or not. No way! I don't want a nickname like that. Really? Like it sounds so awesome. Oh shush. It seems death has taken a liking to you, Yuma. Sheesh. That's one of your talents, no way. Understand this guy. I'll figure out how to discipline Yuma later. For now. We need to come up with a plan to handle the peacekeepers. You said this case involved Vice Director Martina, right? She's Director Yomi's right-hand woman. I heard she's both his close advisor and his mistress. I'm sure they're gonna make a move somehow. I don't even want to think about it. What'll they do? Whoa! Whoa, 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 what's going on? This is what I'm talking about! Everyone, brace yourselves! Uh, are you serious? <laughs> this is so fun! I think we're under attack! The agency is sinking! Where is everyone? Somebody help. Hey, Master, snap out of it. Come on, Master. Did we just go down with the ship? Okay. What just happened? Kaboom! Oh, it sank, all right. <laughs> yep, we were under attack. This is the bolt of judgment, the fire of purification, a supernova explosion. Hey, who prepared that torpedo? Unfortunately, it was I, Martina Electro. Ah, uh, I figured it was you. That wasn't enough firepower! I told you to blow up the whole river and vaporize them, didn't I? Jeez. Now it just looks like I'm causing chaos. Half-assed executions of the law are nothing but senseless violence. This guy's insane. I told you to demonstrate perfect order. Listen. A clean and pure execution of the law is overwhelming, absolute, and completely blows everything away without a trace. I'm terribly sorry, Director Yomi. No matter. You are my beloved right hand. You only need to remain by my side. Yes, thank you. I will forever be by your side to serve you. Thing is, even though you're my beloved right hand, you still need to be punished. Huh? You couldn't even solve a case caused by a couple of brats, not to mention the detectives escaped under your watch. But it's all right. Don't worry, you are my beloved right hand. I won't hurt you. I need you to stay pretty for me forever. This guy is really creepy. I. I understand. So, what is my punishment? See this? It's a recent invention by Amaterasu Corporation called a High Performance Presser. It can compress up to 50 kilograms of material and instantly turn it into a cube. Even humans can be turned into pretty little cubes. Oh! Huh? I'll keep you on my person at all times. So you'll always be by my side. Holy crud! You are my beloved right hand. Please wait! What? You, you must be joking! Hey, you! Take my beloved right hand over there. This guy's crazy! Director Yomi, please wait! Please! Have mercy! 
Oh, Martina. There's something I wanted to ask you before you go. What's... love? <laughs> Take her away. D Director Yomi! Director Yomi! My god! This guy's absolutely insane! Alright! Now, let's go find the corpses of those detectives that got blown up. Good day, sir. What's that? You don't know? I guess not, since you're still new. That's number one, the leader of the World Detective Organization. Th that's him? I had no idea. Why would someone that high up be here underground? There's a book vault here. It's a secret book vault that only number one can enter with his biometrics. It supposedly contains data from generations of great detectives, sealed books, and so on. <laughs> Didn't know that. Don't even think about going in there, newbie. I, I know who I was. Was it number one carrying an old book just now? I wonder what that book was. You're curious? Well, how about you go investigate? You may be a trainee, but you're still a detective. Investigate? Me? <laughs> Kidding. Don't take it so seriously, you man. So memories of the past. Maybe we want to be like number one. So that's why we made the wish. Hmm. 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 Wow, what a case. <gasps> We're alive! That's good. Where are we? It's a very glitzy place. Wait, where am I? Beats the hell out of me. But weren't you by my side the whole time? Don't you know what happened to us? Yeah, good question. Oh, like that time back at the Amaterasu Express. I was only able to stay awake back then because we just made the pact and we weren't fully synchronized yet. Oh, come on. But that didn't work this time. When you lose consciousness, my vision also goes dark. Oh, that's not helpful. Actually, do you remember drifting in the river after the explosion? You almost died. Hell, even as a death god, I thought I was gonna die. This is no laughing matter. Anyway, because your biological activity stabilized, I was also able to wake up. Everything's A-OK -okay so far. Now, let's go find out where we are. I want to go exploring so bad my eyes are watering. That's a bit dramatic. <laughs> where are we? All the question marks. Let's check things out for now. So if I had to guess, we're in Babuki's manor or something because she's like super rich right but my name is slave bird this is your source based gaming channel and this is our continued blind let's play message detective archives rain code for the nintendo switch i'm gonna go ahead and take a pause here uh seems like a good place i, I was trying to go until the end of the uh the end of the case uh so there's probably maybe only like five or ten minutes left in this case if i had a guess but it's just a guess but it could be longer. So we're going to stop here. There's no reason that we can't just start the next case, you know, in the next video. After all, there's stuff that we had to do before we truly dive into the next case. So yeah, uh, you guys have a wonderful, fantastic, amazingly awesome day. And I will see you again soon. Until then, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved. And you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.